Jeez, what a hot, hot pile of garbage that ending was. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back. For item one, the only I am a hobo, Tom. I know it's been a while since I've been here on a Wednesday. Mainly because I've been busy and AEW hasn't been on Wednesdays either in a while. And you know it's a Wednesday. The Bucks of Youth, yes! Actually, after this I have to go to the gym. Um, yeah, today's a two day. Because I was kind of lazy. But that's okay. I'm here to talk about, wait a second. I gotta start off with something first. I have some thank yous to give out. The Barrier. Thank you very much. Yep, you responded with a yes to one of my remarks. You, sir, have definitely earned that six count. And Dario Cueto number two. Yep, that's right. Um, there's going to be more pay-per-views. It's going to be weird. You, sir, again, just like the original Dario Cueto, are experiencing some Mundo Madness. And let's get straight to AEW. Wow, this was a weird opening. First of all, they gave both the Lucha Brothers and Jurassic Express the TV jobber's entrance. No. Terrible. Um, that kind of started off... kind of a very mediocre show. I've heard mixed things about... Um, all Out. The Matt Hardy incident was probably terrible. I'll tell you what. 
Again, I'm still sticking to it. The women's match was probably one of the best matches of the night. Everything else was, was just kind of average. So let's see here. So we start off with the Lucha Brothers and Jurassic Express. Very classic wrestling mess. I'm intrigued because normally the Lucha Brothers follow a very Lucha style. Are they used to getting used to a more American style of wrestling? Indeed. Who knows? Uh, it starts off with a classic wrestling and it goes into some flippy arm drags by Jungle Boy. Uh, Phoenix comes back. I don't care what he says. That's not an open hand chop. That's just a slap across the face. And Phoenix and the other luchadors do that so well for maximum impact. It's an amazing sound. Oh, and by the way, that stadium still looks pretty empty. I don't think they have anyone in the front part of the lower bowl. In fact, I don't think until you get past kind of like the couch seats, you see people. Then they have people like all the way up in the nosebleed sections. It makes a question if, if getting those tickets, because you have to buy them in sets of two, four, and six, if it's actually worth going. Because if it's just me going for a hundred bucks, not worth it. AEW is becoming another wrestling show. Now, however, on Wednesdays, there's no competition because NXT is trying to take out Impact. That's weird. I mean, if you're Vince McMahon, you should always go after the bigger fish in the pond, but he's choosing to pick on the little guy. Boo, Vince McMahon. We'll hear about some booing of Vince McMahon a little bit later. As you can tell by the title. Um, let's see here. So then there's a big assisted splash. On to Jungle Boy by Ray Phoenix, again assisted by his brother Pentagon Cerro Miedo. And while my camera is all kinds of messed up, that's okay. It'll last, I hope. Get me to the halfway point. Um, so, yeah, so this will probably be funky for a little bit. If it gets really unnerving, I might switch it, but who knows. Um, Luchasaurus again, he does the headbutt right after he tags in. Whap! Wow, that's just vicious looking. And let's see here. And I'll tell you what, this Florida humidity plays havoc with wrestlers. Because one, the ropes get slick. Two, you literally just step outside and you start sweating a little. Although today was relatively cool. I don't know what it was like in Jacksonville though. But still, you get the humidity, condensation on those ropes, those fans start blowing cool air across. Everything gets slick. On more than one occasion here in Daytona Beach, I've seen a wrestler screw up on the ropes, freaking grab the towel, curse the ropes, saying, what the hell am I doing in this backwater town? It doesn't have proper air conditioning, nor, nor humidity control. That happens like throughout Daytona Beach. There are have there have been some instances I'll turn the air on, I'll literally see condensation forming outside my windows. That's how bad it can actually get. Um, but from there, then Jungle Boy, he gets shoved in, into a super kick. That's that was actually pretty cool. Then of course Luchasaurus has his big clothesline. And another big clothesline and a slam and the slam before it's on. Which is just like a top rope choke slam. He grabbed the one, I want to say it was Pentagon Jr., grabbed him, choke slam him all the way down to the to the, the ring, of course. So that was pretty fun to see. Um, Phoenix hits a gory driver leg drop combo. The innovation and the way Lucha wrestlers put together wrestling moves is really amazing. I don't know who else can actually do it. Luchadors, they're number one in my book. Uh, then we have the spike package pile driver. The jungle Boy kicks out because he's too sweet. And then there's, there's kind of the weird miscue Canadian destroyer. It's kind of hard to miscue that. But yeah. Jurassic Express won. Kind of a weird match. There was no natural flow to it. It didn't have that fight feel. It, it, it felt... 
really worked. Probably overly booked, trying to get too much in. And sometimes the environment just does not allow that. With that being said, it's a ham sandwich of a match. Then there's a little pushing and shoving between the Lucha Bros. Eddie Kingston comes in on the mic. Um, says, no, 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 come on. Eventually, they hug it out. They are brothers. Again, brothers always fight. Then we have Jake Archer. No, Jake, Jake the Snake Roberts and Lance Archer. Uh, doing a promo somewhere on the west side of Jacksonville because wherever they are it was all it was all graffitied up by gangs. So yes, it's probably the west side of Jacksonville, which is like the worst side of Jacksonville, besides like the north, like west and north is like terrible. It's the place where hobos fear to tread. Hobos like me. Then we have Matt Hardy giving a promo, kind of apologized for his performance, told everyone he was okay. No, you're not okay. <laughs> okay? Your wife was right. If you saw him, he was on such rubbery legs, he probably apologized because he didn't remember anything from that night. And he might be in the world title shot, so that'll be interesting. Then we have, I don't know why they did this. We had Angelico versus Orange Cassidy. Jake Evans starts off, he starts to, to yap at Orange Cassidy. And by the way, for what it's worth, Jack Evans is one of the best talkers in all of wrestling, period. He has, great, he has a great moveset, a high flyer, he can ground and pound, he can do a lot. Very versatile wrestler. We haven't seen them on AEW in a long time, though. The Hybrid 2.0. They're, they're, they're too good. I mean, at least even in Lucha Underground, they, they had, I think they had the trios title. It was Jack Evans and Helico. No, Jack Evans was a heel, but in Helico, Matt, uh, Son of Havoc, and Ivelisse had at one time the trios championship. And AEW treats them like, like, like jobbers. It's, it's like like low low card jobbers. It's terrible. And Helico does the arm press, so that's really good. And then the stretch. It's always fun to see that. Again, so technical is Angelico. He can do the, the high flying too. He knows definitely the locks found in Lucha Wrestling, which is good. It was a drop toe hold into a toe hold neck crank, which was great. Then Orange Cassidy makes his comeback, a dive to a crossbody, swinging DDT. The orange punch, and that was it. Yeah. Nothing else to say. I'll tell you what. I think just because of this, they are treating in Halico like, like said jobber. It's a can of soup. The only good part about this, Antenna Ortiz coming out, beat up Orange Cassidy. And the best friends come out and make the save. Yeah, kind of, kind of what you expect. Um, interviewer Marvez, uh, Rick Marvez, I think is his name, tries to interview the Young Bucks. He gets the super kick party for his efforts. Um, both Bucks were fined $5,000 each for that. Um, Kip Saban then announces his best man, Puff. Comes out. I have no idea who he is. Um, and then, so he's on his best friend, number one Twitch subscriber. Kip Sabian just like mentioned his Twitch channel so often. Pretty obvious jabs against the policies of WWE nowadays. So that was kind of funny. Brian Pillman comes out. Brian Pillman Jr. comes out. Let's not get that mistaken. Um, he looks just like his dad, though. And yeah, he is sent away, and then all of a sudden, da 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 Miro Crush, Miro Cupria, Miro Crush. Because yes, it is Miro Day. Because every day is now Miro Day in AEW. Yes, formerly known as Rusev, Miro comes out. The the brute. I love how they did this. 
You can't say the Bulgarian brute because that's probably trademarked by WWE. But they did say the brute of Bulgaria. I haven't done that before with the havoc of Halloween, so I shouldn't be the one criticizing. Um, it's great to see Miro back. He should make a definite impact in AEW right away. Uh, good for Kip Sabian if he is getting married, if it's a real thing or just some like weird shooting angle. Sometimes you can't tell. I, I honestly have no idea. Then there's a Hangman, Adam Page. And I just want to see a drunk Hangman. I don't care. Hangman and Page has to have a beer more often. Or a glass of whiskey by his side. Constantly. Uh, then the next match, we have Chris Jericho and Jake Hager taking on Joey Janela. <laughs> wow, I actually did give this a suit, a suit rating. And um, Sunny Kiss. Yeah, it wasn't that good. Uh, Chris Jericho, he takes it to, to Joey Janela. Really strike-heavy match. Sunny Kiss eventually gets tagged. And Joey Janela, they drop Chris on the top rope, kind of um, almost flapjack style. But then, and then they do the double bulldog. I think they call it the hot shot at once. Again, trying to kiss up to Jim Cornette because Jim Cornette rips AEW constantly. Deservedly so sometimes. Uh, let's see here. Hager gets in the ring. Again, eats a stare, drop kick. Make, makes them look like garbage. Uh, Chris Jericho uses the ropes to choke. Sunny Kiss, very heelish of him. I mean, if, if you missed this match, you didn't miss much. They There was a missed back elbow by Joey Janela, which led on to... So yeah, then, then he brings the chair. So Joey Janela dives on Chris Jericho. Uh, Janela gets the chair, shoves it in. Uh, Chris eats... Chris Jericho eats the chair shot, and then Joey Janela went for a back elbow, and the chair was right there. And I don't know if Chris Jericho didn't see it, or if that chair should have been further away. And they actually talked about stuff, but he, like, back body dropped, and you could you could see, like, Joey Janela's head, like, smack off probably the hardest part of the chair, the legs of the chair. So that's, like, because, the, like, the chair part can be plastic and cushioned, but the legs have to be kind of fairly solid. So yeah, he, like, and you can tell the referee just, Aubrey Edwards went right over. She's like, oh shit, not this again. So yeah. Um, again, then eventually Chris Jericho does the old chair routine, uh, sets the chair up in the corner. However, he goes into said chair. Hagar is a big guy. Sunny, how Sunny Kiss is too quick for him. Um, he tried the Hagar bomb the trash can, which probably would have hurt him more anyway. But, and you could tell that Sunny Kiss was really holding that garbage can. At least in the ECW, when they did that spot, it would be dented enough where the guy didn't have to hold it. It would just sit on him naturally. They didn't dent the garbage can, so it's going to roll off Sunny Kiss. Because you could see Sunny Kiss, like, literally just hold it in place. And then, like, ever so slightly lift, the, lift it off and when Hagar went, went for the Vader bomb. Again, when you telegraph it that much, it's not that good. Then there was the catapult called by Hagar. Uh, back on the outside, Chris Jericho catapults Joey Janela into Hagar. He catches him and just throws him through the table. Sunny Kiss has the crossbody. Um, so Sunny Kiss was going up an another time. Chris Jericho uses a fire extinguisher. Um, sprays it in the face. Blinding. Sunny Kiss. I think that that is an I. It is considered an iron tint, but probably be like cold anyway. So it was so far away too. Um, and then Hagar had the head and arm cover. Chris Jericho and Jake Hagar win. I'll be honest. I'd expect more from Chris Jericho. This is just a can of soup. Well, I might get done in under half an hour. That's good. Uh, then we have MJF. He fired Nina. Hey, Nina. I'm single, too. I know where Jacksonville is. Um, he almost fired Wardlow. Yeah, Wardlow's like, okay, you're the one that pays the bills. I have no issue, sir. <laughs> yeah, because my boss asked me if I feel like being picked on. I'm like, I'm probably not being picked on enough. <laughs> I'm actually surprised I haven't screwed up more at work for absolute for absolutely 
knowing the bare essential of what my job entails. I probably screwed up so much stuff. I'll hear about it tomorrow. Who knows? Tomorrow is Thursday, though. That means there's only one more work day left when I go to the other job. So it's okay. Uh, MJF, like Moxley had a promo then. What, what, it was, what it was. FCR had a promo. They just got kind of ridiculed. They got a bucket of ice dumped on them with beers inside. Or probably Diet Coke, because I don't think that... Um, What's his face? He's probably old enough to drink at least by his size. Marco Stunt. Yeah, I know it's Mark something. But yeah, so they got kind of humiliated for their celebration. Everyone ate their cake. If there's a cake, someone should go through said cake. Typical wrestling tradition. <sighs> um, then Ricky Starks mocks Darby Allen. Yeah, that was kind of funny. Because Taz is out in commentary. Taz is probably one of the best commentators around. You should just have Taz, Jim Ross, and Tony Schiavone. That's it. Or sometimes instead of uh, Taz, Chris Jericho. Excalibur brings nothing except for a bunch of like lucha phrases that people are like, what? <laughs> Whenever Excalibur says, Tope Coronino, you're like, what? What? In the next match, we have Ty Conti taking on Nyla Rose. Vicky Guerrero came out. Power to Vicky. Uh, Nile Rose slams poor Ty into the corner and then tosses her around. Ty, however, to her credit, does a question mark kick, a little capoeira. Um, and the, the knee lift. It's not, um, however, Nile Rose gets a hold of her, starts to rake the eyes. Again, very heel thing to do. You're a strong person. Um, they go to the outside and Nile gets posted. Um, Conti hits a cross body, which is pretty good. And that was some, like, weird question mark kick, because, like, it tried to hit her in the back of the head, but hit her, like, square on the shoulder blade. Like, again, parts of this show just seemed off a little bit. Let's see here. Um, Nyla. Again, does a leg drop. Taya, no sunset flip. She gets picked up by her, by her neck. Choke slam. And then on the second choke slam attempt, uh, Conti put her in like a reverse Yuji Katami and leg Nelson combo. But then that got countered into the beast bomb. Thankfully, that match was over. Taya Conti, you left a comfy NXT position for this. You know what? This match was also a can of soup. Nyla Rose wins. Who cares? Again, the best part of these matches happens after the match. So Nyla Rose started to beat on Ty Conti, goes after her knee. Um, eventually, Hikaru Shida comes out, makes a save. Vicky Guerrero speaks. It's always good. So that was kind of good. So it saves a bad match with a decent ending. Then we have Kenny Omega talking about how upset he is. Yeah, whatever, Kenny. I think people are getting over Kenny very quickly. In New Japan, he was something special. Here, he's just not carrying himself like that. Th then we had the, the main snooze of the night. Uh, Dustin Rhodes taking on Brody Lee. Uh, Dustin, th they just start off as a brawl, going out to the barricade, then they brawl up to the ramp. Um, back to the ring. Lee goes to the eyes of Dustin Rhodes, begins his chops. His chops actually have some, some thunder behind him, which is pretty good. Uh, he whips at one point Dustin Rhodes into the ropes, bends over for a big back body drop. But no, Dustin Rhodes hits his drop punch. That was pretty good. Lee gets crossroads, however, he kicks out a two. Uh, Lee missed his one kick. Uh, Dustin. He rolls outside the ring. His momentum took him over. Dustin then does a, does a cannonball sent on on him. Uh, Dustin hits the Shattered Dreams on Brody Lee. Another two count. Um, then after they get back into the ring, they go head to head. Yay, booze. Very, very uh, Ibushi. Stone Cold Pitbull. Tamaharo Ishii, I think. I always get them confused. Yeah, it's Ishii. 
Stone Cold, like Stone Cold Pitbull Ishii versus uh, Minoru Suzuki style. They just like go toe to toe, punch each other. Yay, booze is okay. Um, Dustin hits a big clothesline. Lee, however, does some thrust kicks. That leads to, yeah, he does a pair of those. Those leads to a discus clothesline. Brody Lee wins. Meh. Can of soup. Uh, then he picks up Dustin uh, Dustin Rhodes, gives him the Shattered Dreams. Um, he's still upset. Uh, Brody Lee is still upset with Colt Cabana, who's in the match. They shoot him away. They beat up Dustin Rhodes a little bit, bring out a dead body, QT Marshall. And that's the end of the wrestling show. And for the last three minutes, I'm like, wait a second. What's going to happen? Cody Rhodes gives a promo. There's, he's going to be part of the Go Big Show, which is another talent show. Probably held right there. It's probably held in the parking lot, like behind the like makeshift stage. Based on what I saw. Whatever. Um, I don't know. AEW just fell flat. I don't know why NXT left Wednesdays. NXT just has this core of hardcore devotees. AEW's hit or miss now. Impact. Like the main roster, WWE, it is what it is. Impact's a pretty consistent product. And New Japan's on only every so often. So, I'll tell you what, for this show, wow, that was a can of soup. And that's it. Um, tomorrow, I might put a little bonus. Oh, I have to make a bonus video. Friday is going to be a double show. Um, probably sometime in the morning or late that or, or, or earlier that morning or, or later in the morning, depending on your point of view, I'll show you a little bit behind the scenes of NASCAR. I'll go through that, um, review some SmackDown weekend off for, well, weekend at work. I don't have to do this up. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please.